There he goes again, telling Canadians they've never had it so good. It's never been. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. April 30th, 2014. Life in Canada, home of the world's most affluent middle class, the New York Times. Yet today, almost a decade after that NDP prime, liberal prime minister has been in what he calls the big chair, Canada's GDP per capita is actually down, while the American one is up 19%. His carbon taxes are strangling growth. How could the solution possibly be to quadruple the tax to 61 cents a liter and send more jobs and businesses south? <laughs> the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, we know the leader of the opposition doesn't believe in climate change and doesn't believe in putting more money in the pockets of Canadians with a Canada carbon rebate. How many wildfires, hurricanes, droughts are going to go after Canadians' lives and livelihoods before he understands you can't have a plan for the economy unless you have a plan for the environment? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He doesn't have a plan for either as evidenced by the fact that he came completely unglued and started spitting out personal insults and crying liar, liar, liar on a radio station the other day when he learned that I had pointed to his own government report which showed that his carbon tax will blow a 25 to 30 billion dollar hole in our GDP. This was from a report that his government tabled in the House of Commons. If, in fact, his government is lying about the true cost of the carbon tax to our economy, then what is the true cost? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Parliamentary Budget Officer demonstrated that 8 out of 10 Canadian families do better with the Canada carbon rebate uh, every three months than the cost of the price on pollution. And on top of that, Canadians know the price on pollution has brought down our emissions faster than any other G7 country at the same time as it is supporting Canadians in the middle class and working hard to join it. We're going to continue to fight climate change and invest in a strong economy for the future while the leader of the opposition continues to deny climate change and cut programs and services that Canadians rely on. That's great. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, you can't sit in the big chair if you can't read your own government documents. <laughs> Environment and Climate Change Canada carbon pollution pricing data tabled in this House by his government said that it will cost between 25 and $30 billion in lost GDP when this tax is implemented. A further document tabled by his Environment Minister on Carbon Tax 2 says there will be another $9 billion hole for a total of between $34 and $40 billion. Now he screams that this is all lies. Again, if his government documents are lying, what is the true cost of the carbon tax to our economy? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, every Canadian, except perhaps the Canadians in the Conservative Party of Canada, understand that the costs of inaction on climate change will be catastrophic, not just with wildfires, droughts, floods, uh, hurricanes, but uh, with lost economic opportunity, lost jobs, lost growth for Canadians as uh, we solve the challenges of the 21st century. We are choosing to invest in a strong economy for the future. We're choosing to fight climate change and develop the solution of the world's going to need to do that while the leader of the opposition offers a do-nothing climate change climate change plan that will cost Canadians billions. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. His carbon tax has not stopped a single flood, right. single flood, right. or single fire in this right. country. He's not stopped any natural disasters. What he has done is driven Canadians into poverty, quadrupling the tax to 61 cents a liter will cause a nuclear winter for our economy. Something that his carbon tax co coalition partners in the NDP have voted to bring about. So if he really is so confident in a 61 cent a liter tax, why doesn't he call a carbon tax election and let Canadians decide? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
speaker of the problem with the leader of the opposition is he believes in slogans. He just doesn't believe in climate change. The fact is our plan to fight climate change is not just putting more money in the pockets of eight out of 10 Canadians across the country, but it's bringing down emissions and creating jobs and opportunity for Canadians for generations to come. His uh, climate change denialism, his do-nothing plan to fight climate change is going to hurt Canadians. We are going to continue to build a strong economy for the future because we know fighting climate change is part of it. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. But he's not fighting climate change. He's driving production out of Canada to more polluting for foreign jurisdictions rather than our common sense plan to green light green (laughs) projects that produce more energy around the world that displace emissions. That's a common sense approach. And he still won't answer the question, though, on the full cost of his two carbon taxes. I've cited government documents tabled in this house that say that it will total between 34 and $40 billion per year in lost GDP and jobs. If his government documents are wrong, then what is the true loss of GDP as a result of his 61 centiliter carbon tax? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, he talks about driving investment out of Canada. He must be remembering his own time as minister. Because since 2016, Mr. Speaker, foreign direct investment is up 60% in this country. Last year, we were third in the world after the U.S. and Brazil, which makes us number one for foreign investment in the G20 per capita. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, we are continuing to show the world that they can have confidence in Canada and in Canadians. Why doesn't he have confidence in Canadians? Why won't he invest in Canada? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Canada said of Canada's investment problems, emergency break glass. Canadian workers get 55 cents of investment for every dollar American workers get, and only 65 cent for every dollar that an OECD worker gets. The gap between the Canadian and U.S. economy is now at a hundred year high after nine years of the NDP Liberal. So one last time, his own documents show that his 61 cent a liter carbon tax will blow a $40 billion hole in our economy. If that number's not right, what is the real number? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again, we see that the leader of the opposition is frustrated that international economists, climate experts, academics, all back our plan to both fight climate change and grow a strong economy, while he's stuck with late-night far-right conspiracy YouTube videos. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, we are delivering concretely to build a stronger future for Canadians, to fight climate change, and to grow the economy, while he is hiding his head in the sand and refusing to admit even that climate change is real. Then I have chef de l'opposition. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. 2000 to 2014, Canadians attracted 30 to $100 billion more of American investment than the reverse. In the last nine years of this NDP Liberal government, there have been $450 billion more Canadian dollars invested in the U.S. than the return. That's Canadian money billing U.S. pipelines, U.S. mines, U.S. businesses paying American workers with Canadian money. That is the consequence of a high carbon tax and a high energy price that drives jobs away. Why, when will the Prime Minister learn that his radical plan to hike the tax to 61 cents a litre will destroy our economy further? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The problem with that argument, Mr. Speaker, is that the leader of the opposition doesn't understand that the International Monetary Fund and others have projected Canada to have stronger growth than the United States next year, despite the fact that we have a price on pollution, or perhaps because of the fact we have a price on pollution that is drawing in investment from around the world in the growing sectors of the economy to ensure good jobs uh, in uh, in mining, uh, in environmental uh, research, uh, in uh, various industries, because we know the future is greener.
The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Our per capita GDP is smaller than it was 10 years ago, perhaps the first time since the Great Depression that that has happened. He's had the worst economic growth since the Depression. The OECD says that Canada will have the worst economic growth this year and for the next three decades. Our economy has dropped more per capita in since before COVID than any other G7 country. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. This prime minister wants to quadruple the carbon tax to 61 cents a liter, which will be an economic catastrophe for this country. The right honorable prime minister. So speaker, what that little performance just showed is that the leader of the opposition is using his brokenest argument around Canada yeah. to explain why he would cut dental programs, cut ch child care, step away from any climate action, uh, withdraw support to draw in investment. That's his excuse. The problem with that argument, however, Mr. Speaker, is Canada actually has the strongest fiscal position of any of the world's advanced economies. And our choice is putting that strong fiscal position in service of investment in Canadians, in dental, in childcare, in pharma, in... The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. There he goes again, telling Canadians they've never had it so good. It's never been so good for those two million people lined up at food banks. For the one million people every month that go to food banks, in Ontario, record smashing increases in homelessness by his own admission after he promised a food program that hasn't delivered a single meal despite millions spent on bureaucracy. One in four kids line up at food banks. And now the worst. He proposes to quadruple the carbon taxes on heat, housing, fuel and food. How much, how much and how much will that take from our GDP? The right honorable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, the problem that he will not talk, uh, talk of, the problem he has is that he cannot admit that the price on pollution puts more money back in the pockets of middle class Canadians and those working hard to join it. Uh, he continues to spew the line that Canada is broken. And whenever I point out that we have a strong fiscal balance sheet that we should be putting in service of programs and supports for Canadians, he says, no, we need cuts. That is not the path forward for Canada. And that's the choice Canadians get to make. Do we go with austerity and cuts to programs or do we invest in Canadians and their future? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Canadians who can't eat, eat, heat, or house themselves are living in austerity now. And as yeah. to his false PMO talking point about 8 out of 10 Canadians being better off, it conveniently excludes the $25 billion per year in economic costs that his own government admits that the carbon tax imposes on Canadians. And that's why 6 in 10 Canadian families and 100% of the middle class are worse off with his carbon tax. So his documents show Canadians are worse off. If he doesn't have confidence in his own government documents, how can this House have confidence in his government? Yeah, yeah. The, right, the right Honourable Prime Minister. Millions of Canadians across the country have received the Canada Carbon rebate checks that puts more money in their pockets uh, every three months than it costs them on average on the time on the price on pollution that allows us not only to fight climate change and boost our economy in strong ways that create the innovative solutions that the world is going to increasingly rely on but it helps Canadians with affordability at a challenging time he would eliminate those Canada carbon rebate checks and put forward no plan to fight climate change. That's not how you build the future for Canada. That's right.